Today I am going to talk about slips, trips, and falls slips happen when traction is lost between the bottom of your shoe and whatever you're stepping on. This can be caused by uneven terrains like wet ground, ice, or mud, wet or greasy surfaces, poor footwear, and other issues. In addition, slips are more likely to occur when a worker hurries or runs, wears the wrong footwear, or ignores where they're walking. A trip is when someone catches their foot against an object or uneven terrain, causing them to trip and fall. Poor lighting misplaced tools, debris like gravel or nails, and improper safety gear also cause tripping hazards. A fall is a much more severe injury where someone lands too hard on their feet, torso, or head, and is knocked over. Carrying, pushing, or pulling items that are heavy or awkward can also make slips, trips, and falls more likely. These actions can affect the ability to maintain balance and the amount of traction needed where the feet meet the ground. Now let's talk about common causes of slip, trip, and fall accident. One, slick spots or oily spots on walking surfaces. Two, clutter. Three, debris. Four, unsafe stairs or ladders. Five, improperly secured ladders or scaffolding parts. Six, improperly sloped walking surfaces. Seven, loose or unsecured flooring. Eight, ramps without skid or slip resistant surfaces. Nine, accessing egressing vehicles and equipment. Ten, loose surfaces such as gravel or crushed rock. Eleven, weather related hazards. Twelve, uncovered or unsecured cords, cables or wires. Thirteen, poor lighting. 14 walking surfaces have holes or floor openings. Construction areas at high risk for slip, trip, and fall accidents. One walkway. Seasonal changes in temperature, along with regular wear and tear, can deteriorate the condition of outdoor walkways. So these areas should be inspected regularly to identify the ruts, slippery conditions, and other uneven ground on the work site. Also, identify holes and trenches on the site. OSHA defines a hole as a gap, or void, two inches or more in its least dimension, in a floor, roof, or other walking working surface. Cover them and rope them off with caution tape to prevent access to the area. Ensure adequate barricades and warning signs are in place for trip and fall hazards that can't be immediately resolved. Two floors. Floors should be clean and free of water, oil, and grease. Tiled or concrete floors can be etched to provide a non-slip, non-skid surface. Smooth flooring also can be covered with skid-resistant materials to improve traction. Protect employees with options, i.e. walk-off mats, slip-resistant soles, or shoe-drying areas, to ensure their footwear is dry for the conditions. 3. Stairwells and Steps Stairwells and steps should be well lit and sturdy railings should be provided along both sides when possible. Steps should not be dangerously steep and have the same rise and depth with visible edges. Keep stairs and stairwells free of grease, ice, snow, boxes, and other obstacles that could cause slips or trips. 4. Poorly lit areas. Use proper indoor and outdoor lighting to reduce the risk of slips and falls. Outdoor stairs, walkways, and parking lots should be well lit. Conduct regular lighting inspections of the construction site and replace burned out bulbs immediately. Ensure adequate outdoor lighting as the seasons change, it gets dark earlier and stays dark longer. 5. Material storage. All materials should be stored away from walkways, not blocked doors or exits. Be sure that items are not impeding the flow of people. Ensure that things are not stacked so high that they become hazardous. OSHA has requirements for particular types of materials and how they will be stored. How can slips, trips, and falls be prevented? 1. Maintain good housekeeping. Keep walking and working areas. Clear of debris. Don't leave trip hazards in the work area. Keep your work area clear of debris on the ground, gravel, loose materials, and anything else that could cause someone to step wrong. Debris can be hazardous if it includes nails or other sharp objects. You may need to allocate time for cleaning up messy walking areas throughout the day. Outdoor surfaces should be kept clean and dry. They may be treated with sand, salt, and anti-skid adhesive when necessary. Indoor surfaces should be secured with non-slip floor mats that allow people to clean their shoes. Heavily treaded construction work boots, and shoes can track in nails and other potential hazards. 2. 
identify and take precautions for wet and slippery conditions. During certain seasons, construction sites can be especially hazardous due to ice, snow, and other wet weather conditions. Clear walkways regularly, at least once every 12 hours during snowfall or icy conditions, and periodically in drier months if water is allowed to collect. Keep walkways and other surfaces as free of slippery materials like mud and precipitation as possible, and implement a wet floor signage policy where wet areas are restricted from access until made non-hazardous. 3. Use the right footwear. Using proper footwear is one of the most effective ways of preventing slips, trips, and falls on site. Regarding work boots, stick to ones with slip-resistant soles, as these offer the best traction on smooth or uneven surfaces. Adding solid, non-slip sole inserts to your regular boots can also make a big difference. These inserts add a layer of durability and grip to your work boots, adding extra protection against slips and falls. For toe protection from crushing injuries, Workers should wear steel toe or composite toe construction boots. 4. Maintain and look out for cords. Some trips and falls result from loose power cords, cables, or similar material. You can prevent these injuries by marking these areas with caution tape or similar methods so that they stay out of your team's way. If cords will be in place for an extended time, consider covering them or taping them down to prevent tripping. 5. Take caution on stairways, ladders, and other uneven walking surfaces. Be mindful of safety on stairways and elevated surfaces. Report missing or broken stair rails and slippery or damaged treads. Don't rush, walk, don't run, on stairs. Hold on to stair rails while going up or down. Don't carry a load you can't see around on stairs or around docks. Don't jump on or off platforms and loading docks. Stay away from edges. Stairways with four or more risers must be equipped with at least one handrail. Always use handrails if equipped and maintain three contact points to prevent falls. Ensure ladders or portable working platforms are on sturdy ground. Always face a ladder while ascending or descending. 